Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'll talk a little bit about data fetching in React Native, but uh, also just data fetching in general. So I've been uh, working with React and React Native for quite a while now and uh, data fetching always seems easy in the beginning, but then when you get down to optimizations and just general structure of the app, when it grows bigger, uh, data fetching can be, get kind of complicated to be honest. Um, so today I'll show my new preferred way of doing data fetching and one way I wish I had known, yeah, months ago, many months ago. All right, as you can see on the right, I am in the app that I worked on in my previous videos and uh, I'm getting to the point now where I want to add some data in here, some actual data that is being stored and uh, let me just zoom in here a little bit and remove these tabs. All right, so just a quick introduction to this home component. So the home component is the one you see on the right here. We have a month picker uh, up here. And then basically we have a button that says add words of the day. And normally this button is only here if, uh, yeah, if we do not have uh, added a word of the day, but uh, as a test, I just set this one to true always. So we always have this button showing here. All right. Now, uh, right now I have my data in a use state up here. And the way I would normally do data, if I was gonna get some data is to create a use effect hook. All right. And in here, I would pass an empty array as a second argument. And in my uh, function body here, I would do something like API, get me all the collections. And then I would just attach it then here and then do whatever result I get here, set data, and then that'd be all. Okay. So something like this. Now let me just quickly introduce this function. So if I jump in for, to my API file, you can see I have a few functions in here. And basically, as you can see, I am using async storage for saving my data. So for those who don't know, async storage is for storing data on the phone. So if you shut down the phone, you have kind of like a little storage area where you can put in put in data. So next time you open up your phone, you'll be able to access that data. Although if the phone breaks or something else, that data will be lost forever, right? But the async storage is great for storing data like user data or whatever. And even for dummy projects, you can just store everything in there unless you have a bunch of data, then there won't be uh, space. But for this project, it's okay. So just a quick introduction of this file. So I have a um, function here called get API get collections, and that's the one I am calling. Oh, let me just delete this. We didn't get to this point yet. All right, so in here I have API get collections. All I do is I call get collections and uh, the get collection function here, it goes into the async storage, checks if there is some collections in there. If there is, I will pass it and then return it. And if not, I'll just return an empty array. Okay, that's looking pretty simple. Now um, I'm back in my home file here and so far I don't have any data. So let me try to add some data. Now, if I click on add words of the day, you can see down here I have an on press handler and that's gonna trigger API add collection. So in here, it's just gonna create a unique ID using UUID library. Then define your object here with a date, name, no words, and the ID. And once again, I'm gonna get all the collection I'm going to push the new collection here and then call save on that. Okay. And the save function is just uh, basically stringifying the collection and then setting using the set item on async storage. 
Okay, enough talking. That's, uh, let's try to click here. I click add. Now when I go back, hmm, nothing. I don't have my collection here. So when I click on press here, I call API add collection, and then I do my routing here. So I push to the word collection page. Let me just try again. And uh, yeah, when I go back, you can see I don't have data here. And that's because this use effect hook is not triggering the second time. If I manually reload the app, so if I open up my terminal here and press R, you can see I have my my data here, okay? And uh, this hook didn't run the second time because this route was in memory. Now we can fix that problem pretty easily. Or not easily, but uh, if you are familiar with this hook called use uh, focus effect, yeah, something like this, uh, we could pass in our logic here. So this use focus effect hook is from uh, the React Navigation Library. And basically this hook will run whenever the screen gets focus. So in here I could call something like this. And every time I would end up on this page, this would get called, okay? So I could go in here, I could go back, I would have my new item, all good. Now, the problem is if I went to, let's say I went here, I wanted to jump in on this item and then go back, I would trigger another API call here because I got focus on the on the screen, but not, the data didn't actually change. So here I'm doing a redundant call. So either we can do this where we just call it once and then we don't get the updated data or we can all do this and then always get the latest data, but then maybe do some redundant calls. Or we could do something completely different. Now, in addition, when you do data fetching, you also need to have a loading state, right? You also need to have an error state, all this stuff. And uh, imagine if, why you do that, if you have like a generic way of handling that, you could also have some amazing caching capabilities on the side that's just built in. Well, I want to introduce you guys to React Query. So let me delete some of these imports up here, just manually delete that. And then even let's just delete this state here. Okay. Now my app will error out because I don't have any data yet, but we're going to fix that in a moment. So uh, if you have don't have this library, just go to your terminal and then write yarn add react query like this. This is for react native and react, as I said. So uh, whatever you're working with, pull that in. Uh, when you've done that, you can do use query from React Query. And as the first parameter, you just pass in a string that explains what kind of data this is. For me, it's collections. And then as the second parameter, it's expecting a function here, okay? Now, for me, it's just gonna be an async function. And I'm gonna be calling, mm, I'm gonna be calling my uh, API get collections here, right? And I'm just gonna return that. So make sure you return the data in this uh, second argument here. Now, what this hook returns is first of all, it returns data. But it also return is loading, so you can render something whenever it's fetching data, and it also returns any potential error messages. When I save that, you can see this data slides up and says object is possibly undefined. And the reason for that is when we do call this use query hook, our data will initially be undefined while uh, it's loading, will 
be true since we were loading some stuff and then it will go false and uh, yeah we don't know if there, there will be any errors yet but uh, yeah basically data is undefined so in here when we're doing the filtering the data is at this point undefined but uh, if we're in TypeScript we can just or in JavaScript we can just do this um, which will just uh, make sure that just in case data is undefined uh, yeah this will still work okay now that is pretty cool so is this going to solve our problems let's try so if i click here and then click back oh we still have the same problem we are grabbing our items here but it's not loading now that's true it's not loading but 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 we can we can fix this pretty easily so into our api file when we are doing a save here we can do something that's going to seem a little magical so here you can see i actually have a pre-import here uh, and the one i'm importing is query cache so uh, after i'm doing my or even before i'm doing my async storage here i can run a command on this query cache and at this point you might think hmm, this is a little magical i'm just importing this strange object from my query and i'm doing something on it and yeah that seems a little uh, funky but uh, anyway uh, let me show you how it works so in query cache we have a bunch of methods here and uh, the ones you will be using most often is either set query data or you can uh, invalidate queries. I'm just going to go and use invalidate queries and then pass in the string of the query I want to invalidate. So now I'm basically saying to React Query, uh, whatever query that was done before that had this name, collections. So if I go back to home, you can see here I called my use query here with the string collections right so now i'm saying to react query here hey all these uh, queries that was done previously uh they are now invalidated so now to refetch all right so that's pretty cool so now i can uh, go here at an item i can go back and uh, wait let me check i had i have four items here right click plus oh i got another one all right so it is updating here, very cool. Um, yeah, that's working, that's that's brilliant. Uh, this naming is not great. <laughs> anyway, uh, the other method that's very neat here is if you don't want to actually go to the server to pick up data, in our case it's just async storage, so it's not too bad, but if you were working with a server, you could do something like query crash uh, set query data okay and then here you could pass in the collections key and then here you could pass in a function that returns this is how collections look now please don't make a refetch but please update the cache okay so here I could do return collections so this is how collections looks now okay so if i'm in my home in home here i have one two three four five six items if i click here you could almost see that it already updated before i even got to the new screen and if i go back it's still here so now i just grabbed now i just updated that collection state here but i didn't invalidate the query i just updated the state Okay. All right. So uh, yeah, I won't I won't say much more in this video. This is a pretty short one, but uh, this should uh, give you some kind of idea of uh, how you could do data fetching. S -s Last note uh, is you could also solve this problem by using uh, global state. Just having everything in global state 
but uh, that comes with its own problems. And I really believe that maybe not for React Native apps, uh, React Query is the way, but definitely for uh, at least the React apps. This uh, library does a lot for you and uh, it has done a lot for me so far. And yeah, as I said in the start, I really wish I had known this library uh, a little uh, a little earlier. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, I'm also a beginner with this library, but I can definitely see some of the power already. And I'm gonna link. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a great video that sh uh, has a little more, uh, a few more examples. And uh, this is from the author himself, so this guy knows what he's talking about. Okay, hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.